Hi. Now, I know why you're here, um, and I'll get to that story in a minute, but uh, I really need to start at the beginning. Do you mind? Good. All right, let's see. Well, the first time I met Jesus, he was staying at our home. He had been traveling um, and teaching, and he'd been teaching in Bethany, where we lived, all day, and planned to travel on by night to the next village. Now, my sister Martha is a consummate host, and she insisted that Jesus stay the night with us. Um, the look of gratitude that flashed across his face uh, is really my first memory of him. You can't fake that kind of gratitude. Uh, he immediately accepted, and I immediately got nervous because this guy we had heard so many rumors and story about stories about was staying at our house. I mean, I had heard about him healing lepers and the lame and giving sight to the blind, but our teachers had also warned us many times that he was a false teacher, um, that we couldn't believe him, that he even blasphemed by uh, claiming kinship with God himself. Um, frankly, I expected him to be 10 feet tall and his face to glow um, like Moses did when he came down from the mountain that or him to be just this arrogant guy who was claiming to be the Messiah. But Jesus was just a normal guy. Um, if you saw him on the street, uh, you wouldn't pick him out of a crowd. He was uh, nondescript. Um, I often think of that passage in Isaiah, I think it is now, uh, where it says that he was not comely to look upon. Um, he wasn't the best looking guy in the crowd. And I say that, but as soon as you knew he was talking to you, you knew that everything he said, he meant. Um, and when he smiled at you, whew, it pierced your heart deep. Um, mm. So that night, anyway, um, when Jesus should have been sleeping, we were talking late into the night. Um, I felt a little guilty, but then I realized that uh, I could tell that for Jesus, he didn't feel like he was wasting his time by talking to me. Now, um, if you were to talk to my sisters, you would have heard the story of a spoiled young man who uh, they probably prayed to uh, get married very soon so that someone else could help uh, wrangle me into helping with the family business. Um, honestly, I spent more time with my friends and entertaining than I did helping them take care of the business. Uh, I was the only boy in the family. Uh, spoiled might not begin to describe it. But uh, my favorite memories are those light, late night talks with Jesus. Um, he would stay in our house often when he would come into town. and. Sometimes we would stay up for hours, and he would, he would have us laughing, and we wouldn't even remember what we were laughing about. Um, other times, uh, he'd, uh, I'd turn around, and he was there, and even after he left, I'd be so guilty because I knew that he had seen how I had mistreated someone in our household. Um, that happened a few times. I didn't like that. Um, but what was great was the next time I saw him, there was this quality that all I, I just, I have to call it mercy or love, that I knew I had another chance with him. I knew that I hadn't ruined our relationship and that he still loved me. Um, and that was pretty hard to digest at first because uh, um, I realized later that uh, he wasn't just our teacher, he wasn't just a rabbi. And he wasn't just a messiah, but he had become my brother and my friend. So uh, I got sick, and you know most of the story, right? Yeah, um, this is the parts you do know, but I think there's some things you don't know. Um, at first we thought that I just had the flu or a cold, um, and Mary and Martha didn't really get worried until I stopped eating. Um, Mary is an excellent cook. Martha works hard, but... Uh, when Mary puts a hurting on the skillets, my goodness, um, many times I left the table, um, rarely did I leave the table without having seconds. Um, 
so when I stopped eating, um, I could see that my sisters had gotten worried. Um, I couldn't stay warm. Um, I just kept getting worse. Nothing we tried worked. So finally, um, they sent for Jesus. Um, they sent word to tell him that I'd been sick, and they were kind of reassured because he, he told them that the sickness was not to death. So I stopped worrying, and then I got weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And I remember laying on the bed near the end, thinking, not, why doesn't Jesus come to heal me? Um, because in Bethany, there were still sick people who had met Jesus. Um, yes, he healed many of the lame and the blind. But what Jesus really did was heal them on, on the inside, if they let him. Um, no one who listened to him, who really listened to him, and believed in what he was teaching, ever went away the same. And so... I thought, if Jesus was really my friend and my brother, wouldn't he want to come and see me one last time? Because by now I could barely lift my head off the pillow, and my sisters were keeping vigil because they knew that I would go at any time now. And as I lay there, thinking bitterly about why Jesus didn't show up, I started remembering the passages of Scripture that we had studied a couple of times like uh, Daniel and how Daniel had been saved from the lion's den. But then I remember that those weren't the passages that Jesus called his favorites. Jesus loved Psalm 22 um, for times when he was facing things that were overwhelming and he often identified with David who kept his heart focused on God even when he was facing overwhelming circumstances, even if he felt forsaken, um, or Psalm 23, um, even though he, um, they tried to stone him, uh, there was a hit out on him. Um, many times people hoped they could catch him traveling at night and just get rid of him. Um, so he knew that his life uh, was always in danger, and Psalm 23 really comforted him. But I remember, I'll never forget, his face when he talked about Job and how when Job heard the, the final news about losing not only all his things but his family, the ones he cared about, that his first response was to fall down and to worship God. And, and Jesus' eyes practically lit up when he talked about Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. I don't call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's their Baal names. Um, so when he talked about them, he was the most passionate when he got to the part where they said, our God is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't. So I grabbed both my sister's hands as I lay there weakly. And they could tell I couldn't hold on any longer. And I said, Can we really say we be really believe in Jesus, that we love him and we serve him, if we don't still believe, even if he doesn't rescue me? And I laid back on the pillow, thinking about that. And that was a tough moment. And honestly, I know you want to know, but I don't remember anything until, at first I thought I had gotten tangled in the bedclothes, you know, the she all wrapped up in the sheets. Uh, and I knew I felt better and that I wasn't sick. And, and then the next thing I remember is knowing that even if I couldn't see where I was walking, that I had to get to Jesus because he was calling me and shouting my name, Lazarus, come forth. I finally got to him and they got the bed clothes off me and when they explained what had happened I was pretty shaken up um, disappointed and then I remembered that I had just been raised from the dead and here was Jesus and 
I know that the stories tell about how he wept when he heard that I had died. But that's when we wept. Um, he wept to see me again. To, to, I think somehow he knew that I thought he had abandoned me. and It was great to be able to tell him that, yeah, I thought that. Um, and to talk about how even though he didn't rescue me when I wanted to, that I would follow this man anywhere and do anything he told me because I knew that it would always be right and good. It's been several, many months now, and uh, Jesus himself has been raised from the dead. And I like to think that I know what it feels like to fall asleep thinking you've done all you can do for someone you love. And then for the first thing you hear to be that same voice of love calling you back from an impossible place. And I know that uh, Jesus appeared several times and what I find myself doing is peeking back over my shoulder and wondering when he'll appear again. Um, it's kind of hard for me to look at uh, sickness and difficult circumstances quite the same because even when things look really bad, um, you know, we've been persecuted here around Jerusalem. Um, your life is forfeit if you talk about Jesus. Um, and yet a, a big part of me longs for the day when he will call my name again. And I will see him face to face. Because the truth is that even though you want to know about what it was like for the man who walked out of the tomb, the truth is that the Lazarus that Jesus met that first night he stayed at my house was already dead. Little by little, my life, my very heart changed as I spent time with Jesus and really weighed what he was teaching us and the way he truly was my friend. I met Jesus and well before he raised me from the dead. He, he created a new Lazarus and I've never been the same. Thanks for taking this time with me. So uh, that's a pretty intense um, monologue um, about the life of Lazarus. Uh, one of my favorite Easter memories is having myself, Ricardo, and the st other staff at Teach My People um, do monologues like that. Um, we had 10 days with the kids, and we did four or five monologues, and then every staff member, we alternated th them with real people today who've met Jesus and we talked about how our lives have changed. So it was testimony upon testimony of how meeting Jesus face to face changes you. Um, I don't think I have had the privilege of doing anything that I think counted more um, eternally um, for Easter. You know, we've done great songs at our church, but uh, walking the kids through that week was one of the most important and of course, when you do things like that, they touch you maybe more than they touch the people that you're reaching out to. Um, but I've never forgotten it. And it's the thing about me that I would hope you would never forget. That my, the legacy I leave behind, I hope, is that if you met me, then you met Jesus, and then your life was never the same. <laughs>